What's up guys, Mike here, and today we are continuing the stories that prove a certain player is not human series with Nate Robinson. Now, Nate is kind of a unique player in this series because in the past, we've had guys like Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant, you know, guys who are considered NBA legends. Nate Robinson is not considered an NBA legend. However, when it comes to the not human series, the most important thing is that the player was just someone who set themselves apart in a very big way and was just considered special. So because nate robinson was at most five foot nine when he was playing in the nba and despite this fact still managed to play 11 seasons in the nba and gave us countless memorable moments i think nate is a welcome addition to this series and i think you guys are really going to enjoy this video side note before we start one this video does not go into nate's dunk contest wins because i figured you guys really already know about those wins instead i tried to focus this video on things you wouldn't know. also lately you guys have been killing it with likes and i think that has really helped so if you enjoyed this video make sure to like and make sure to turn notifications on and now let's get into five stories that prove nate robinson was not human number five the block throughout his entire life nate robinson always defied expectations i say this because despite his height of course one nate was a professional basketball player two he was known for his dunks and three he was also known for his blocks yes Yes, throughout his career in the NBA, Nate blocked LeBron, he blocked Shaq, he blocked Dwight Howard, and perhaps most impressively due to the height discrepancy here, Nate also blocked 7 foot 6 Yao Ming. This block was of course incredible due to the fact that one, Yao Ming was a legitimate NBA star at this point, and two, Yao Ming also stood about 2 feet taller than Nate Robinson. None of this really mattered though when the Rockets were playing the Knicks as watch here as Yao Ming is sitting in the right corner of the basket and gets a pass from Tracy McGrady. Then, as Yao goes up for what looked like an easy shot, suddenly there is Nate Robinson putting himself in a perfect position to send Yao's shot in the opposite direction. This block was so incredible that many say it was the best play in Nate's entire career and at the time, as you can see, all of the fans jumped out of their seats and basically screamed because Nate Robinson had blocked Yao Ming. As Nate himself recalled, quote, that block changed some kids' lives. I got thousands of letters from them telling me that I was their hero because they were short like me and I blocked the biggest guy in the league. It made them feel like they could do anything too. Number four, game winner on his role model. Ultimately, the player who made Nate Robinson want to play basketball the most was, unsurprisingly, Allen Iverson. I say unsurprisingly here because, of course, Allen Iverson was an undersized guard who scored a lot of points and that is exactly the play style that Nate Robinson carried to the NBA. Because of this, when Nate actually got to play against his role model on November 26th, 2005 in Madison Square Garden, you've got to believe that he was smiling the whole time because this was kind of unreal. I mean, imagine playing against the man you have looked up to your entire life and, well, little did Nate Robinson know that this game was going to be one of the most memorable moments of his life because we've got to remember this was just Nate's rookie season and this was only a month into his NBA career and despite the fact that Allen Iverson absolutely torched the Knicks this game for 40 points and 10 assists the score was tied at 102 to 102 with under 10 seconds left and Stephon Marbury was bringing the ball up now Marbury at this time had 33 points on 14 of 26 shootings so because he was having a good game and because he was you know kind of ball dominant it was expected that Marbury was going to take the last shot here. However, because Nate had built enough trust with Knicks coach Larry Brown, Nate was one of the players on the court at the end of the game, despite the fact that Brown was notoriously tough on rookies, and I think you can guess what happened next. Somehow, in a shocking moment, Stefan Marbury actually passed the ball here and gave it up to Nate Robinson, who appeared wide open in the corner until Allen Iverson contested. That didn't matter though, Nate would rise up and shoot over his hero and hit a game winner in the garden in what had to feel like a surreal moment. Again, Allen Iverson was his role model. It was the man he based his game on. And now as a rookie, here Nate Robinson is in Madison Square Garden, draining a game winning shot in his hero's 
face. Nate would later say that it was this shot that proved to him that he did belong in the NBA. And to me, that makes perfect sense. Number three, potential NFL pro bowler. Yes, guys, for number three here, we are taking a step back from basketball and looking at Nate Robinson's football career. Because yes, if Nate did love football more than basketball, there is a very real chance that he would have become an NFL pro bowl. Nate himself has said, quote, to me, it'd be scary to think about my future in football. If I really gave it my all and stopped focusing on basketball, gave everything I have on football, I'd probably be one of the best corners the NFL has ever seen. This, of course, is a very big statement. However, Nate does have some credentials to back this up. His dad actually was an NFL draft pick who ran for 142 yards in the 1982 Rose Bowl. And taking a look at Nate in high school, it was clear that he had the same gift for football as his dad. Because in his senior year, despite the fact that his best position was cornerback, Nate would actually run for for 1,200 yards and was named an All-American in both basketball and football. In fact, throughout Nate's high school career, he was never really recruited for basketball. Instead, all of the big football programs wanted him. He was seen as a star football recruit, something that is not surprising at all considering his ridiculous athleticism. And speaking of that athleticism, not only was Nate an All-American in football and basketball, but in track his senior year, he would also set the state record for the 110 meter hurdles again showing us that nate was just a different breed now because of his athleticism and because of the perception that nate was a better football player than basketball player he actually was recruited by washington to play football now before accepting washington's football scholarship he did talk to the basketball coach to make sure he also could play basketball but despite this washington saw him as a football player something that again was unsurprising seeing as for the second half of his freshman season, Nate would start every game and actually recorded two interceptions while on the way to showcasing his ridiculous talent. Talent that, when it came time to make a decision between basketball and football at Washington, would actually cause a Washington booster to offer Nate Robinson $100,000 to stay on the football team. And just to wrap up Nate's time playing football here, I do want to mention that yes, part of the reason Nate was great at basketball and football was his athleticism, but another very, very big part here was his work ethic. Because while playing football during his freshman season, after every football practice or team meeting or whatever, Nate would make sure he would finish his day on Washington's basketball court practice, later stating that he knew that all of the Washington basketball players were going to be practicing the entire offseason, so he was willing to sacrifice sleep and his energy level in order to keep up. That is exactly Exactly the kind of work ethic that gets a five foot nine basketball player into the NBA and keeps him there. Number two, New Year's Day explosion. Nate Robinson would start his career with the New York Knicks, and it is well known that the Knicks have not exactly been great in recent years. I say this, Knicks fans, not to trash your franchise, but to make sense of the fact that Nate Robinson was benched for 14 games in the 2010 season, despite averaging over 17 points per game the year before. Now, the reason the Knicks gave for benching Nate was due to chemistry issues with then head coach Mike D'Antoni. However, the 2010 Knicks were a 29-win team. It is very hard to see a situation in which Nate Robinson would not have helped them. Especially when you consider that on January 1st, 2010, after sitting 13 straight games, finally Nate's number was called and man did he deliver. This has been the case for his entire career. Whenever there was a challenge, Nate would face this challenge head on and exceed expectations, but I don't think anyone expected this this because against the Atlanta Hawks shot after shot went in and by the time everything was all said and done Nate would score 41 points in a come from behind win and on top of that scored 11 of the Knicks 13 points in overtime unsurprisingly Nate Robinson would receive a standing ovation on his way to the locker room and Jamal Crawford who was on the Hawks at the time would say quote I've seen it since high school 
When he's scoring, he's as good as the best of them. And number one, playoff assassin. Because he played for the Knicks for the early part of his career, during his first several seasons in the NBA, Nate Robinson did not play in a playoff game. Then for the Boston Celtics, yes, Nate did appear in the 2010 NBA Finals. And yes, he did have some memorable moments, including the time where he jumped on Glenn Big Baby Davis's back. However, he only played about nine minutes a game during that series, so he wasn't too much of a fact. However, with Derrick Rose injured, it was Nate's time to shine playing for the Chicago Bulls in the 2013 playoffs. Because in what was probably the most memorable entire performance of his career, late in game four in the first round against the Brooklyn Nets, it looked like the Nets had an easy win, but Nate Robinson had other things on his mind. Hitting clutch shot after clutch shot, you've got to think that the basket looked giant for Nate in this performance as despite the fact that the Bulls were down by 14 points with under three minutes left, it was Nate Robinson who would bring Chicago back into this game and he would end the fourth quarter with 23 points. That is crazy. And yes, this game did end up going into overtime. Then in the first overtime, look, it is Nate Robinson. The Bulls are down by two, but no, nope. the score is tied. Nate has ice in his veins and that was very apparent just 50 seconds later because watch now with the score tied, Nate rises up and takes this shot and somehow it goes in. I mean, guys, look at this shot. Absolutely ridiculous. Chicago would go on to win this game and they would go on to win this series, largely due in part to Nate Robinson's heroic performance. And the thing is, Nate's hot streak did not end there. As in the very next round, playing against LeBron James and the Heat, during game one, Nate and LeBron were diving for a loose ball when LeBron accidentally elbowed Nate in the face. It would come out at halftime that Nate had a hole in his mouth and was bleeding a ton, but that did not matter. Nate Robinson was a warrior, so incredibly, Robinson would play on and would end up scoring 27 points with nine assists in a seven point shocking Chicago Bulls win. Now, to be fair here, the Heat would go on to win the next four games. However, as a Bulls fan, I've got to say, because of this mini playoff run, Nate will always have a place in my heart. The man was stepping in for the youngest MVP in NBA history, and he delivered big time. And there we have it, guys. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Personally, I find Nate Robinson's story awesome. And you know, as a Bulls fan, again, he will always be in my heart because of the 2013 playoffs. The man killed it for the Bulls that year, so I was really happy to be able to make a video on it. With that said, if you're new to this channel and you like this video, leave a like and make sure to subscribe and turn notifications on. If you're already subscribed, thank you so much for supporting. You're awesome. We all know it. And as always, have an awesome day, guys, and cue that music. By the way, if you're still here while the music is cued, here are two videos I think you are going to love watching. All you have to do is just click on either one of them on the screen right here. And other than that, guys, again, have a great day and peace.